left because he was running out of campaign funds. Is right. there new money now found for Paul Songus? Well, we've managed to raise in the last few days almost $100,000 for the draft Songus campaign in New York, and there have been efforts the last two weeks to reduce the debt. I think if there's a strong showing on Tuesday that uh, we have three weeks before Pennsylvania and where the June primaries of uh, New Jersey and California, uh, there's plenty of time to raise the necessary money. I think if we could put together somewhere between a million or two million dollars in the next couple of weeks, uh, he'll be back in a race. All right, uh, what about uh, the other primaries? Is he still lined up for the coming primaries as we go through the democratic process here toward the July convention? Uh, he's uh, in every primary. Um, and we have grassroots organizations set up in each of the remaining primaries. Uh, we're, we've networked with them. We, uh, we have people coming in from all over the country to help us on Tuesday. Uh, we'll have 4,000 people out in the streets carrying leaflets, alerting the public that he's still on a ballot, and, and supporting Paul Tsongas is not a protest vote, but an affirmative statement of support for the message, the messenger, and the things that he brings to uh, uh, American politics. Well, in uh, recent interviews, uh, when Mr. Songus stepped down, he indicated, uh, in, to some extent, uh, rather great relief that he wasn't part of the political uh, campaigning process anymore. What's bringing him back into the race? What is making him as interested again as he was a few months ago? Well, he's always been interested. I think if you saw the last segment of the Illinois debate with Jerry Brown and uh, Bill Clinton going at one another, I think there was a brief shot and Paul Tsong is standing there watching the two of them battle it out. And he had two options, either jump into the battle uh, or sit there like a bump on a log and, and, and see what developed. I think removing himself from that kind of dynamic was a strategic decision, a smart decision. I think he's allowed the two of them to um, uh, define themselves against each other. And I think, quite frankly, he looks a lot better to people than he ever did before. We've gotten the best press we've had in this whole campaign the last two weeks, and it's a cry for his return. Last night in Nassau County, they did mm -hmm. a straw vote, a couple of hundred people. Uh, we got over 50% of the vote. Uh, I think yesterday's CNN poll was very telling. If the uh, election were to be held tomorrow, George Bush would beat Bill Clinton two to one, and in fact, the Democratic Party could finish third behind Ross Perot in November. That is an important statement, an important signal to the party leaders. It has not gone unnoticed. All right, very quickly before I let you go, uh, does your polling apparatus at all suggest how much of the vote Senator Songus has in New York already? Uh, it, it, uh, unfortunately, we don't have the resources to uh, do the necessary polling, but we believe we're, uh, at this moment in time, in excess of 15%. All right, Mr. Armanakis, we appreciate you coming by today. Thank you very okay, much. Thank you. James Armanakis is the chairman of New York for Sungus, joining us from our Wall Street Bureau. As we mentioned earlier, Jerry Brown has spoken out loud and clear against Bill Clinton for taking $1,000 donations from Wall Street. John Metax is now more on the fountain of Clinton's campaign financing. Wall Street still is a bastion of Republicanism, but this year, Democratic candidates seem drawn to it as never before. Bill Clinton came to curry its votes and to exploit its symbolism. The stock market, and I have nothing against the stock market, but the stock market tripled while wages went down, the work week lengthened, unemployment went up. That happened, and it's not right. But in this election, Wall Street's influence goes far beyond the symbolic. The pocketbook, which is on every voter's mind, and that means economics, and uh, so there's a real intersection this year between the, the main issue with the campaign and uh, what makes uh, Wall Street go every single day. Former candidate Paul Tsongas deserves some of the credit for injecting such Wall Street issues as capital gains and industrial productivity into this year's Democratic debate. But despite the power of ideas, there's no denying the power of money. And this year, more and more of that Wall Street dough has gone to Democrats. Clinton has relied on a vast network of personal and professional acquaintances on Wall Street for policy input, but more importantly, for financial support. The Blackstone Group's Roger Altman, who met Clinton in college, has provided policy and fundraising support, personally bringing in more than $50,000 so far. And Goldman Sachs co-chair Robert Rubin is just one of several executives at that firm to organize support for Clinton. Michael Milken's lawyer, Arthur Lyman, brought in $25,000 worth of donations. In all, the Clinton campaign has raised roughly 20% of its more than $9 million in New York. 
Workout specialist Wilbur Ross knows the power of Wall Street connections. He was New York finance chairman for the Bob Kerry campaign. Wall Street people are used to asking for money. In a sense, you can say that's what Wall Street does, is it asks for money all the time. So Wall Street people are used to doing that. And second, tend to know a lot of people who are substantial because of the nature of our business. John Metaxas, CNBC, New York. All right, when the money wheel continues, Neil Cavuto joins us with a look at the afternoon credit markets coming up in just a few minutes. Stay with us. Today's closing bell, sponsored by Payne Weber. We believe our most important investment is an investment in relationships. For years I haven't even thought about it.